inspire the audience to higher levels of achievement by appealing to noble motives and to the audience's needs and emotions. Don has made people laugh as a blue man and as Cirque du Soleil, and as a Cirque du Soleil partner clown, yet consistently fails at getting his eight and 11 year old nieces to laugh at his jokes. <laughs> Before taking the spotlight, Don produced behind the scenes, creating hundreds of hours of broadcast television network, including Discovery, TLC, HGTV, and Travel Channel. Don's topic today is dealing with change. This speech would be appropriate for corporate audiences dealing with downsizing or job insecurity. He knows personally about this subject, having transformed his life through getting fired from one of television's most popular shows during a devastating divorce. So today, giving the speech, find your spotlight, three steps to the greatest show, to your greatest show on earth. Please welcome Don Pollard. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters. This will be a speech of intrigue, <laughs> seduction, <laughs> and clown stuff. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yes, as Brianna said, uh, I'm going to speak about change, job transition, that sort of thing. How many people have woken up with a feeling of dread and worry about your job and existential angst? How many people, yes, one, two, very good. Uh, I get it, this is a big, a big problem. From, from this speech, from my tra transformation from a successful yet miserable television producer to internationally touring, performing clown and presenter, I wanna show you guys how you can discover your true direction in your life in a place maybe you've forgotten about yourself. Now, this is a big problem. This is a serious problem. A lot of people wake up with these concerns. Do you think about, do you, do you work harder and harder to try and get the appreciation you desperately want from your job and it's just never coming? You start strangling your relationships trying to get appreciation because you're not getting appreciation at work. Do you wake up and start thinking, wow, did I pick the wrong job? Did I pick the wrong career? Do you consider getting on the 10 and driving west until you're underwater? <laughs> <laughs> a friend of mine, he, he had a job which he hated, which he put years into, that his company got sold, and suddenly he was terrified he was going to lose the job that he hated. It's a serious thing out there. There's a book called How to Find Your Most Fulfilling Job by Roman Kuznarek. He found that 50% of people don't like the job they're in. And 60% of people, if they had the opportunity, would choose a completely different career. And 100% of people thought Raymond Kuznarek was a super sweet man. <laughs> <laughs> Another woman, Brie Larson, actually Brie Wilshire was her name. She wrote a book called The Top Five, The Top Five Regrets of the Dying. She was a hospice nurse in Australia. She found the number one regret of the dying was I wish I didn't just do what other people wanted and I did what I wanted. The number one regret of the dying. I get it, I get this problem. I remember I was directing what they hoped would be viral videos for General Motors. We were touring through Europe. I was working with Cal Gas from Tenacious D and I was writing and directing, coming up with these concepts that we hoped would just get tons and tons of views. So I was doing all kinds of research and Googling and looking at uh, websites that track the trends and trying to think ahead and how can I outthink the, the zeitgeist and, and figure it out. So I'd write these concepts and we would shoot these concepts with big names, like we work with the Foo Fighters and Blues Traveler and Jason Mraz and make these comedy videos and none of them hit, everything fell flat. Until finally, I just sat down with Kyle and I was like, hey, what do we want to do? Let's just make ourselves happy. Let's just make ourselves crack up. So we started doing really weird stuff, and then we started getting traction. We got over a million exposures for the website that these videos were on, and ended up winning a best event related website for General Motors for this work. So the trick, how do you pull yourself away from pleasing other people and start pleasing yourself when it's so scary? It's very scary. We're trained to please everyone else. Well. I found a three-step method, I call it the three B's, 
to get you focused more on what you love because that's what's going to get you where you want to go. Or maybe where you don't even know you want to go, but where you should go. My first B, be still. Be still. Can you just sit with your uncomfortable feelings? There's a saying I like to say, don't just do something, sit there. When you have an uncomfortable feeling, I used to think being quick and making decisive moves was, I was being decisive, this was a positive thing, right? But what I realized was I was just taking action so I didn't have to feel my uncomfortable feelings. I didn't know what was at the other end of those uncomfortable feelings. For all I knew, if I felt bad and I let myself feel bad, I would just keep feeling bad forever or drop into some well of de depression and never come out of it. What I've learned is letting myself feel my bad feelings, it takes faith, but there is an end. And what it gives me is a better perspective on my problem that I never would have had if I simply took action and immediately. So be still. If you're faced with an uncomfortable situation, if you have uncomfortable feelings this week, can you sit for 30 seconds and just feel your feelings? I challenge you to do that. Second B, be selfish. Be selfish. Self-care. If we're going to stop pleasing other people, we have to fill it with something else. And I suggest please yourself. By honoring ourselves, we're going to find who we really need to please. I was so busy pleasing other people, I didn't even know what I wanted to do. When I lost a job for a major television show, I had a lot of spare time, and I honestly did not know what I liked to do. When I sat there like, what do, what, what do I do? What do I want to do? I couldn't answer it. I remembered, I thought back, okay, what did I like to do as a kid? One of the things I loved to do was go swimming. So I went to the Korean spa. And as a lot of you guys know, I love the Korean spa now. I have a budget for it every month. And I actually credit going to the spa as one of the most critical aspects of my professional success. Even though it has nothing to do, seemingly, to any kind of productive use of time. But it's like taking care of myself somehow honors myself and lets me make decisions that puts myself first. So this week, if you have some spare time, I challenge you, can you do something just for yourself? Seriously, and no sneaky doing it actually that's going to maybe get you into some networking thing or sneakily, if I write this, I'll be working on my next speech for Toastmasters. No, can you just do something totally selfish? I challenge you to do that. And my final B, be simple. Be simple. Can you simply do the next indicated action that your heart's telling you to do? It's also in our world, we're so trained, and this is everywhere. Say where you want to be in 10 years, plan it out, and take action now towards that thing in 10 years. You're going to have a crappy life for seven years, but in 10 years you're going to be having a great life. And I was living my life like that, and I see people like that all the time. When I started doing improv comedy, I had no idea I would end up touring for a partner of Cirque du Soleil through Canada. No idea. I simply made every decision that came in front of me. I said, I'm just going to go inside and feel what feels right in this immediate decision, not thinking three decisions down the road. And that got me to where I was. I never would have predicted or judged or thought where I would have ended up. It was a big change making decisions like that. Hunter S. Thompson said, when the going gets weird, the weird go pro. So there's something idiosyncratic in you that's going to take you where you only you need to go. Richard Feynman, Nobel Prize winning physicist said, it should be easy, like unforking a bottle. It's easy to do these things. So when you're in the flow or doing what you should do, the decision should be effortless. It should be really clear. And if you're forcing yourself through, you might be on the wrong track. Now, I know personally that these steps work because in 2009, I was going through a pretty devastating divorce at the same time that I lost my job to one of the most popular shows on television. I was a writer for House Hunters on HGTV. So I was in Portland, Oregon, sitting in my small apartment. My, my soon-to-be ex-wife was elsewhere. And her mortgage broker 
just gets off the phone with me. We were on the phone, this mortgage broker screaming at me to give her, give my soon-to-be ex-wife my freelance savings account to pay for the down payment of a house that she bought without my knowledge. And because we weren't divorced yet, I kind of had no leg to stand on. The other thing was, she's an attorney and I'm an unemployed television writer. So my choices were very limited at that moment. But I felt everything I worked for, a house, a lawn, kids, just, I saw it crumble right in front of me and there was nothing I could do about it. I failed. This was the first time in my life I unequivocally, equivocally in my brain failed. And I felt something in my gut, it moved up to my chest, up to my neck, and all of a sudden I started crying. I started crying for the first time in my entire life. I mean really crying, like sobbing. And I remember I was sitting, I'm sitting behind my steel case desk, I have this vintage steel case desk, sobbing and the tears were hitting the desk and it's this old plastic top and when liquid hits it, it changes the color. And I had all these spots of tears on my desk. And I look up and there's a bank of windows in my apartment directly facing another apartment building with a bunch of windows. So there's a bunch of people looking at this man sobbing his eyes out. But for some reason, I knew I needed to feel these feelings and I just said, I'm going to trust that there's something at the other end of them. I'm not going to throw myself into Match.com. I'm not going to jump on the web and try to find another job. I'm going to feel these feelings all the way. And around that time, I started doing improv. I don't know why I started doing that. It just felt like the right thing to do. And in improv, you make the choice that feels right in the exact moment. And that's when I started making decisions based on my gut and feeling my feelings. Can you honor your own feelings? Can you feel your feelings all the way through to figure out what it is you're really meant to do? I challenge you to do that, and I think if you do, you'll be the star of your own service. Thank you.